Hi, this is Mark Austin, and today I am joined by John Piper. He's joining me in Koh Samui. So I thought we would take the opportunity to run through our top 10 trading tips. So here they are. Recently, Mark and I were asked by my publishers, Harriman House, to contribute to a book about trading, spread betting, in fact, and the, uh, we were asked to give our top 10 tips for successful spread betting. Uh, and quite curiously, I, I've been asked this a few times, every time I do it, it changes quite dramatically. And there's quite a big difference between what Mark has said and what I have said, so I thought it might be useful to go through the, the, the top 10 tips we've each got and just discuss it and, and see, see what we can learn from the fact that there is such a different um, approach. So I'll start with my, my first top 10 tip, which is trading strategies, develop trading strategies. Because in my experience, it is developing systems which you can test and then use, which is a, the, the, the basis of all success. Certainly all my success has been based on trading systems, testing them, using them, and, and bringing in profits, doing that. Mark, do you want to do you have any comment on that, or do you want to go into your first tip, and then we can discuss the two together? I mean, well, you've got various systems, haven't you? I mean, how many would you say? How many core systems would you, would you say you, act, you actually use day to day these days? Um, well, it's about ten in total. Uh, I mean, I, I, I count Elliott Wave Theory as, as a system in the sense I look for certain key elements like five-way patterns, mm. ABCs, um, corrective, impulsive action. So I, I think I've systemised that within my own mind. Um, market profile, I've taken the, the, the idea of spikes, systemized that as a PDS system. Um, and there's, there's, I mean, triangles, there's, there's, there's a good 10 that I use on a regular basis. The extreme stop system is a new one I've developed, uh, expiry systems. And they, they it, it depends, I mean, I, I, I use them every day in the sense I look, look for them every day, but they don't always apply every day. Yeah, I mean, uh, I I have, I pretty much have the same. I have about 10 to 12 core systems which I use uh, for the FTSE. And you need them to provide structure to your trading, really. Um, I mean, I, I believe that you need to have your core systems, but you also need to apply some discretion. And once you combine these, that's when you know successful tra tra trading emanates. Yeah, the, the discretion is quite an interesting point, in fact, because mm. um, many traders use a system and then start having discretion and end up, end up destroying the system. And it, it, it's, there's quite a fine line between using discretion in a sort of emotional sense where it's not actually tested and doesn't actually add anything, in fact, it takes stuff away, or using discretion in, in the intuitive sense where it actually does add quite a lot. Yeah, I mean, I would say to begin with, certainly follow the mechanical rules to the system. But if we take POM, for example, that's got a 70 plus hit rate. Now, personally, when I use POM, because I've used because I've got so much experience using POM now, I've I can actually move the hit rate up to around 85% because I'm now I've got the experience of when not to use the system. Okay, so that's a good example of. I mean, that's in partly intuitive, partly testing, isn't it? Yeah, but you have. I mean, obviously, that it takes it takes. You need to know your system inside out. So there's no point in expecting to have that skill straight away. Certainly, when I, I first started using POM, I was just sticking to the mechanical rules. But it's quite dangerous. I mean, it's dangerous to start thinking that way in the early days because you're liable to destroy the system, have bad experiences, mm. stop using it. I mean, there's a very obvious loop people go through where they, they, they may buy a perfectly good system, they maybe have a couple of losses, they start altering it slightly, destroying it in, in the process, then have more losses and give up. And it's. Uh, I think for most people, most people they buy a system and they have unrealistic expectations of that system because all, all systems will go through uh, will go through a drawdown period so for palm for example that if it has a 70 percent hit rate we know that there's going to be 30 percent of losses uh, built into that system and most people once they hit that uh, that that run of losses it could be two or three losses in a row they give up and that that is the, uh, that yeah, that is a large statistic in in the trading in the trading. No, you're quite right. The, the un, 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 sorry, unrealistic expectations is, is a biggie. It, it's, it's a massive. huge, huge issue. Yeah, because people um, they expect things to be sort of on a plate for them. Well, as some people do, and, and and it never is in the market. Whatever you do, actually, whatever you do in the world that's that has some some value requires putting some work in. And it's only when you do that that you get the value out. Uh, 
and uh, well it is bizarre I mean, people people won't even wait to paper trade a system just for, for a few trades just to get a feel for it you know they'd leap in um, without really any idea of how they're going to react to the system because what you should do is, is spend a few days preferably a bit longer in fact visualizing the trade so you so don't put don't actually put money on or, or, or maybe one pound a point just just very small um, and put you know imagine the trade going on and imagine how you'd feel with a stock where it is the market doing bouncing around uh, to, to get a feel for how how the thing is going to interact with your own personality I think it's probably time for your tip now yeah my, 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 my first tip is um, is preparation certainly when I'm when I'm starting the trading day I do all my preparation um, before the 8 o'clock open on the on the FTSE I predominantly f uh, just trade the FTSE and then it's just really a case of executing my plan with flawlessly really um, and with 100% discipline if I don't over the years I mean if I don't do that I find that I could get into I could get into an area where I'm I, if I'm placing unplanned trades usually they don't they don't have a very high success rate so these days it really is a case of just following my plan and there's, there's the odd occasion where I will deviate from my plan and I'll, I'll spot a, 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 a trade through, through price action throughout the day but generally I, I just do everything um, off my trading plan. I think for, for novice traders certainly when, when they're first starting if you win off the back of a, a losing trade it really is um, it's 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 probably the worst thing that can happen to you as a novice trader because you're then you're more inclined to then hold on to a bad trade the next time um, you enter the trading room, and um, this, as you know, this leads on to usually um, holding on to a long-term loss, and this 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 leads on to psychological problems. It's a, it's a big thing preparation beforehand because before the market opens, it's, it, the, 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 nothing's happening. So, so you have a, a, you have a, a clear view of, of, of what what has happened, and you can then plan ahead. But then, when things start to move around, it can become quite emotional. I mean, mm. this is something that actually passes with experience. But but if you can plan beforehand, and I think that's, that's really really important. I mean, it does help being in Thailand, doesn't it? Having additional hours, whereas in the UK, of course, you. Um, you know, market over at eight o'clock, so you got to get up a bit earlier. But 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 you got the night before, of course, as well. Yeah, I mean, in Thailand, I start my preparation around um, ten, eleven o'clock, and that that gives me a, a long time because the markets here don't open till three o'clock. So I've got a long time to really prepare and get myself focused, um, get lots of coffee down me, um, and it's a great it's a great help. Certainly in the UK, when I was trading, um, getting up at six o'clock in the morning. I'm not, an, I'm not an early morning person anyway, so it, it really does, it, it helps me definitely. I mean, the preparation is something I do as well, it's, just, it's, not, it's not in my tips as such. Mm. And partly because I guess I, I, I developed these, these 10 tips as a sequence to success. As a, it's, they aren't just tips, they are a sequence to go through to reach success. And, and they're tied in with, with my video course I'm just developing at the moment. Uh, with each module adding on to the next, you know, developing the theme throughout. So the second one, second tip is mm -hmm. put in the work, um, which is something you've got to do. You've got to put in the work, and, and it's only when you put in the work you get results. You know, you had a farmer doesn't bother putting the work, you never ha never have a crop. It's, it's a big complete waste of time. So you have the. I, I can give you systems, but you need to personalise them. You need to work with them, test them out, so that you know they're going to work. You know, it's no good just, just buying a thing and then just going in randomly. You need, need to see the track record, see that they work over time, uh, so, that, so that you have the confidence that when there are a few losses that you just ride through it. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, the best traders on my service are the ones that clearly put in the work. Um, I get lots of questions from them. Um, they give me regular updates on how they're doing. And uh, they have a passion for trading, and, and, and it shows because you know, their results are getting better and better and better. Um, I have some clients who um, who actually email me in the morning with, uh, and there's been an odd occasion where they've actually duplicated what I've written on my written on my report, which is which is fantastic. You know, they're really learning um, what's being um, provided to them. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Uh, my tip number two is 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 trading the gap. This is the most well, in my view, one of the most reliable and profitable strategies there is for trading the FTSE and it also is the the bread and butter of many professional traders certainly a lot of institutionals uh, institutions out there do trade the the closing closing gap 
Um, and this is something I'll be teaching at my, um, at my seminar in April. We're going through how you can trade the gap for a living. And you can actually trade this one technique and make a nice, good living out of it. Yeah, the gaps are amazing. I was thinking back, in fact, on, on my, I suppose, my two major systems, or, or both being based on meeting other people. I mean, I met Pit Fox back in the 90s. He introduced me to market profile. From that, I took spikes, which I developed PDS from. Then I met you, Mark, in well, a couple of years ago, mm. you introduced me to gaps, and again, I, I introduced the POM system, as it were, based on, on, on what we discussed, mm. uh, which, is, which has been a, a, a huge move forward, actually, in, in what I do. Uh, I, think, I think it's, um, I, I mean, there is originality in what I do, and what, but, but it's based on other people's experiences. I, I think it's, it's one of the, again, things of life is you, you learn from other people, and, and that's what's sure, so, so sure. valuable, really. Sure. Um, so shall I go on to my third one? Turn on three, yeah. Concentrate on your system trades. Uh, th this is quite important too. It's very easy to start getting emotional about markets, putting on emotional trades. Um, and over time, the emotionality becomes intuitiveness, where it's useful, whereas the emotional, emotional trading isn't. Intuitive trading is. But this, this takes time and experience. So my suggestion is that if you have uh, this problem and you find your, your, your system trade is doing well, but you're doing it as other trading isn't doing well, then just use two accounts and keep one with a fairly small amount of money in it for your emotional trades and one for, with a much larger sum, which is your, your bread and butter system trading. Um, but it's very important to, you know, th th this is the emotional trading I'm going, I went on about in the way to trade. In fact, it's interesting, my, my top tips now pretty much incorporate all the key elements that were mentioned in the way to trade in, in sort of fairly succinct um, bite-sized chunk. So anyway, concentrate on your system trades. Which again is, is one use, I, I think, I think you'd agree with that, Mark. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I tell quite a few people actually, if they, um, if they do get, in, if they do, do want to do impulsive trading, then yeah, have a, have a separate account, put a thousand pounds in and, and just trade one pound a point. Um, if you want to do that sort of trading, and then if, if, if that thousand pounds is written off, then so be it. But for your, for your main trading account, we all know that you have to stick to the rules and um, yeah, you, you know, impulsive trading, it, there's, no, there's no real room for that. Uh, tip number three for me is uh, learn that your market has its own personality. For the FTSE, there are many personality traits uh, which I've learnt over the, over the years and they do repeat themselves over and over again and this makes the market quite predictable. Um, it's, it's one good reason why I just focus on the FTSE these days because I, I don't really need to be looking at other markets because the FTSE I, for me has become quite predictable these days. Um, and, and certainly market, um, market personality does apply to, to other markets as well. There are, there are certain traits. I mean, one example for the FTSE would be that Mondays tend to be bear days, um, and Tuesdays usually reverse Mondays, and they have a bullish tendency with the, with the dividend in the afternoon. Yes, you, sent, you sent me a prototype of, your, of, of Mark's map the other day, and I, I have been very impressed recently, well, a long time actually, of, of how well you call FTSE in your daily reports. It, it says quite staggering actually on occasion. I mean, mo most of the time you call the market really, really well. And it's, it's interesting how, how your systems do that now. Well, it's, there's, there's more to trade than just bar charts and, and indicators and, and patterns. It really is homing in and, and really um, gaining a clear understanding of, your, of the individual market dynamics um, and what that, you know, that's what the professional traders do. It, it's all about knowledge. Uh, once you once you increase your knowledge, it does really increase the edge on your trading. I guess I guess expiry is a similar thing. Yeah, I mean, that, that all that all ties into it. Um, but very few traders pay attention to expiry. I, mean, I, 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 I do because I, I traded options for many years, and it's, it's you know, expiry is a big deal when you're an options trader. Uh, yeah. But I mean, hardly anybody else even mentions expiry. Well, thanks. I, mean, I, I don't think anybody does, in fact. Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, I, I've I've started to call it personality trading, um, and it, it, again, it's going to be a, no, a module which I'm going to be covering at my my, forth, my forthcoming seminar in April. Um, how you can trade the FTSE um, using these personality traits, and it, it's a great leading indicator because it tells you or gives you a very good indication of what the market is going to be doing before even you know the market has, has opened. So it gives you it gives you a great. Um, roadmap um, to follow during the day. 
Um, okay, well, the next one is uh, tailor your systems to your personality, which I guess follows on personality trading to a sense, but it's, it's a different, different thing. I mean, if, if you have a full time job, you leave the house at, say, half past eight, then obviously you've got to tailor your systems to, to the open at eight o'clock, which is actually very handy because we have a lot of systems that do just that. Um, I mean, I mean, POM, for example, is, is a system which uh, you can set your trade up at about 10 to 8 if you want to, and it's all set for the day. PDS actually the same for the opening trade. Uh, well, once the first bar's out the way. What's uh, great is that the, the trade can be completed quite quickly. Uh, for me, there's nothing worse than opening a trade and it lingering around all day, hovers in a bit of profit, hovers in a bit of loss, and you're there waiting and um, sort of focusing it all day. I mean, they're, they're, they are my worst kind of trades. I quite like my trades to be completed quite quickly. <laughs> and we know the magnets usually. It are. is ideal. I mean, it is, yes, yeah. It's done and dusted. Um, then you, you know, you've got the day to uh, to go and do whatever else you need to do. But the trend days are the most profitable trades, of course. I mean, the, and, and the signals are given early in the morning. Yeah. Oh yes, indeed. Uh, I mean, trend day. If you don't get into a trend day first thing, um, it's very very difficult to then um, get into the trend without using a large stop and risking quite a bit. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's what PDS was designed to catch. It was yeah. designed to catch all trends, which it does. I mean, it's, it's uh, as long as the low is is near the low of the day and the high is near the high of the day, it's, it's bound to catch the traders. Really I mean, I've adapted. I mean, I use the five-minute bar, the five-minute bar for quite a few. It's the same. It's similar, similar concept to PDS. I've I've incorporated a few different things in there as well. Um, but I think for the service, I we use the five-minute bar. Um, I think it was last, last, what was it? The first of the month. The first trend day of this month we used it. Um, you know, it was a very profitable move because it, there, was a, there was a good likelihood that there was going to be a big move that day. No, you said we something. Just, I we just, followed, yeah, we just followed the, the breakout. Um, it is interesting how, how we can sort of, I don't know, pinpoint market action just just with a number of techniques which which, which develop based on knowledge, as you say. And not well, I mean much, that, that uh, comes that, that comes back to the the personality as well. I mean, I mean, well, tip number six, I think. Yeah, tip number six for me is well, I won't I won't cover it again. Is that on the first of the month? This is generally a bullish day because a lot of institutional funds, a lot of pension funds will commit um, fresh monies uh, on the first trading day of the month. So I was actually bearish um, on the 1st of February. My analysis was very bearish, but just because of this, this sort of personality knowledge, um, I avoided my analysis and I just relied on a breakout strategy, which was a five minute bar and, and mm -hmm. it worked very, very well. Yes, the first is a notoriously bad day, isn't it? I mean, it can, can be a, a day be. Which, where, where things, unusual things happen. Yes, definitely. Have you done tip four? Right? Um, tip number four for me is uh, avoid focusing on your profit and loss account. So if you've done your preparation uh, before the market opens, there really is no reason to be focusing on how much you've made or how much you've lost on a trade. You should just be focusing on your charts and, and when to exit um, exit your trade. If you're focusing on how much money you've made or lost, and it really is just going to cause you um, to either cut cut your um, your profits quickly or or run losses. So for me, it's it's a it's a necessity just to either cover up your PL account or um, or put a move it to a different screen. But there really, there really isn't any need to be focusing on it. Yeah, but, but very true. I mean, it's so easy to see, or I mean, as I say, see a five hundred pound profit and doesn't want to take it, but of course, it could be the worst thing to do if you've yeah. got another, I don't know, another hundred points coming, coming in. Well, money's so, very, money's very emotional. Um, so if you're focusing on it, then you know we're human beings, so it's going to cause us to um, sometimes act irrationally. Um, Almost always. <laughs> oh yeah, almost, almost. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, we, we are very given to that, aren't we? I mean, it's, it's um, yeah. So certainly, the, the more you can avoid these sort of emotive inputs, the, the better your trade is liable to be. Mm. Um, okay, well, number five for me is, is actually the psychology of position size. It's, 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 it's very important to realise that your um, if you have a problem increasing beyond say two pounds a point, then. Uh, then you're very much going to limit your trading profits. It's something you need to be aware of, really, because unless you do get the, the trading size up to five or ten pounds a point, I mean, let's take a hundred point move. You catch a hundred point move and you've got one pound a point on it, then that's a hundred pounds. Well, that's a good profit, but it's not going to change your life. If you've got five pounds a point, that's a 500 pound profit. Well, that, that could change your life depending on, on where you're at. But obviously, a hundred pounds a point and you've got a 10,000 pound profit from that same move. 
then it's a very different ball game, and, and that's when you take over, as it were. You know, your, your life becomes very much your own in that situation. But you had to get up there. You know, and it's, it's not something you do immediately. You had to go step by step. Um, and if there are psycho psycho psychological issues, um, as Mark said, we all have this, this thing about money. We all have very different perceptions of money, and it's invariably important to us in many ways. Uh, and it may require some, some consultancy or something to discuss that with somebody and, and, and overcome this. Uh, because it can be a very limiting factor in, in what you're doing. It's certainly, uh, for me, it's taking little steps. When I, when I first started trading, I was on quite low stakes and I've built it up over the years. But there have been cases where I've built it up to a certain level and I wasn't comfortable, so I've had to then reduce my, reduce my leverage back to the previous level and, 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 build, and build it build the way up. Um, you, have to feel, you have to feel comfortable uh, with what you're trading, otherwise, as you, as you rightly say, it's, it's going to be problematic. Yeah, it's, it's good technique, actually. You're cutting your position size by half, if you're, if you're a bit ups if things aren't going well, mm. and just, just reducing your position size by half can give you an immediate fix. You get a lot more relaxed, you find things are much, much easier, and it can make a big difference, so it's a good, it's a good one. You can also, I mean, you can also open a trade half your usual stake, and once it's um, in a in a uh, winning position, you can always add to it as well. Um, so once it's gone your way, you can um, add the, the second half onto your trade. At least then, um, you know, the, maybe the first half you've locked in um, it, so it's risk-free, and you're adding the second part, so um, it's not quite so uh, such a, a, a large amount in the back of your mind. It's also good, actually, to, to, that, that technique is also good for stopping yourself bailing out too early because mm. the mind needs to concentrate on something. And if you don't give something else to do, it'll, it'll start thinking about how it can take its profit too early, probably. So if you can actually think about adding to positions, it's a good way of staying with, staying with it and running, running the profits. Sure. I think you're on five, Mark? Uh, five is, for me, is quality and not quantity. As a, as a day trader, um, there is a, a huge misconception out there that you have to trade every day. And really, this is, this is habit forming. A lot of people get used to placing a trade every day. And if there isn't an opportunity there, um, or there isn't a clear opportunity there for the, the trading day, they will feel inclined to place a trade anyway. Um, so big mistake, one to avoid. Certainly as a day trader, you don't have to trade every day. And, and for the FTSE, if you're, if you're patient, there's always uh, very clear signals, at least two to three clear signals, um, which you can home into um, each week. I got it much worse actually than taking a trade, a sort of substandard trade, just because you feel you ought to do something. I mean, well, really it's habitual. Um, people, yeah. It's like having a cup of coffee every day. You, you get used to doing it every day, and, 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 and day trading can become quite addictive. Yes, um, yes, it's yes. something which you uh, you get used to doing every day, and, and if you don't place a trade, then um, um, then you feel like something's missing. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I've been there in the past many times. <laughs> I'm sure you have, John. Yes. Okay. Um, number six is the three elements of success. One is your own psychology; you've got to get your mind straight. Second is money management, which is an absolutely critical level. You, you've got to risk only certain amounts of money on your position size. I've discussed this exhaustively elsewhere. I don't think I want to repeat that. Um, and the third thing is your systems. You know, so you've got the three things, your psychology, your money management, and your trading strategy systems. You know, with those three things, if they're all in place, then you're going to do fine. OK. Uh, well, tip number six I've already covered, which was the don't be a bear on the first day of the month. Um, do you want me to do tip number? Oh, you do, do tip number six. I've just done six. I'll do seven. Um, tip number seven concerns the three, the, the, the process on, on the road to success and, and the three elements. Uh, again, it's, it's really important to know where you are in, the, in this process so you can, you can see where you've got to go next. Um, I, th I think I often think of myself as a, sort of, as a, a living signpost with, you know, go this way, go this way. Um, because in a way, that's what we do. We, we, we try and guide you along this path to make sure you get to your destination of being a successful trader. Um, and the first, the first phase is where you come to the market with, with rose-tinted spectacles and you're very much profit-orientated. Um, and because you're fixated on profits, you tend to make them because of the law of attraction and beginner's luck. Uh, so, so you, beginners tend to do quite well. I mean, many binary traders, I find, double their account size in the first few weeks. Um, but the problem is that at that stage, you haven't, you're not aware of the risks and you're not, you're not trading in a, in a risk-averse fashion. So the law of averages catches up with you um, and you, you, make a, you make a serious loss. Now, this is a bit of a shock to the system. You know, you're not, not prepared for this generally at the time um, and you then become loss-orientated. 
which is not a good place to be. Um, you don't have to lose much money, in fact, in this phase, because you're always throttling your trades, very tight stops, taking any profit you see, you grab it because you're so desperate for any profit. Um, but it's a really bad phase, you're spinning your wheels, really, and it can last quite a long time. You've got to get out of this phase um, into the, the risk-reward orientated condition, where you're basically you're, you're aware of risk and reward, and you're orientated on making money because of risk and reward. And it, it's a very important process, and you've got to understand where you are, so you know where to go to next. Yeah, risk orientation is, is critical. I would say 80% of my planning is all down is all, is all down to risk now. It's how how little risk I can uh, take on a trade to make maximum reward, um, and that's really what I'm I'm trying to focus on each and every day. Yeah, very. Um, so it's, it's, it's what it's all about, basically. Isn't it? I mean, there's no, no doubt about it. Yeah, I, I, I think I think certainly my subscribers they they get access to all that. Um, I, I, hopefully I, I do a, a good job at sort of mentoring my clients um, and teaching them the, the correct way to trade. And certainly if you're, you're short-term trading, it really is, it really is a case of keeping, keeping the risk minimum to really maximize the, those rewards. I've certainly got a lot of satisfied clients. I mean, you show me the email sometimes, and you know, I, I think they, they seem very pleased with what they're getting from you. So, so. Yeah, I mean, they're all, they're all happy at the moment. Uh, I've I think one, one good thing about services, is but we've all got a very good relationship. And I've got, I've got, a, I've, I, I communicate quite a lot with the clients, uh, with my clients, and um, I've got, I built some really good personal relationships there as well. So it's ideal. I mean, it's, it's what, I mean, it's really good to have a business you enjoy doing, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's, it's be, rewarding. It's very, you know, very rewarding in, in all sorts of senses. Sure. Um, is it my your turn, isn't it? Tip seven, um, eight. Tip number seven is is perseverance. Fortunes do not come to those who don't wait. Um, what I'm trying to get at here is that when I'm trading uh, in the morning, I do a lot of my trade setups in the morning, and if I'm using a, a tight stop loss, if I'm clipped out for five or ten points, I might actually have another attempt at entering that trade if the market then confirms what I was looking at in the first place. I would say, well, most definitely, mo most professionals can take up to three to four times to actually enter a trade and then lock into some good profits. So don't give up. If you lose a few points, um, you know, have another go. Certainly taking small losses will, will strengthen your mind. And it's, it's, only, it's really just the big losses that you need to avoid in trading. Yes, I mean, the, the early, in, the, in the profit oriented phase, we tend to take big losses because we're not keen to risk. And in the loss oriented phase, we tend to take lots of small profits because we're throttling our trades too, mm. too much. Um, but yes, I mean, the, well, I guess both will be avoided, but the, the big losses obviously can be a knockout blow. So it's, it's pretty critical that you do that. Yeah. Okay, my tip eight was concerning random reinforcement, just to be aware of this, this, this nature of the market, whereby you, you do your trade one day, it makes a profit, same thing next day and you make a loss. So you get accumulating this random reinforcement whereby um, one day the market tells you yes, that's good, next day it tells you it's bad. And you've got to, you've got to look at the, the market or, or your system uh, over time. It's no good looking at one trade or one individual trade and saying, well, that was a good trade, but that was a bad trade. You've got to see how it performs over a period of time. It's just something to be aware of. Mm -hmm. So when you do your research, um, you don't focus just on the last trade because as human beings we tend to do that. We tend to put more weighting on what happened yesterday um, than, than what's happened over the last year, say. And it's very important to, to it's interesting be aware of that. I mean, we, obviously, we, we have Steve Bradley on the team and he, he runs the, um, the gold service. And he, he did mention, and I totally agree with it, that once he started to um, keep a real track of his his uh, performance and his track record, it made a huge difference. Because just looking back at um, how your system's been uh, you know, developing and, and uh, how it's performed over a long period of time, if you do hit a, a couple of losses or three or four losses in a row, then it does give you that reinforcement that you, know, you, you are following a good system and you're just going through a losing streak. Yeah, yeah, it, it, and not to give up. I mean, it, it certainly helps the whole, the whole it's, it's vital really, vital. Sure. Um, number eight. Mark? Number eight for me is simple is better. Um, now this applies to systems. I, I'm a strong believer that um, the more overcomplicated a system is, the less rewarding it is in the market. For me, I have uh, many many systems which I use for FTSE, and they're all developed on simple but very effective um, uh, concepts. And then we, we were talking about discretion before and how once you know your system's inside out, you can then apply some discretion on when and when and when not to use them. 
Um, and this is when the profits really, really start to stack up. This is trade selectivity, isn't it, really? Um, it, it's a combination of, of systems, having the right systems, um, knowing your market, and then um, applying some discretion. Yeah, yeah so. uh, As I said, I was talking about POM before, how it's got a 70% hit rate, but personally, I've got, I've got that up to an 85%, 90% hit rate. Because Which I'm is unbelievable, uh, isn't it? I mean, it, it's, you know, look, look back on some of the systems I've used in the past, yeah. it's... Uh, um, yeah, it's quite amazing. And, and of course, you're looking to take smaller profits, aren't you? Which is another yeah. big thing. But if POM was very, very complicated, then I probably wouldn't be able to do this because I'd be, no. I'd be, I'd be searching for so many, I'd be focusing on too many factors within the system. Um, but so f for that reason, you know, POM you know, is a fantastic sort of method to use uh, and one to build on. Um, certainly, I know uh, whenever we do these POM sessions, um, a lot of our clients are using POM in different ways. You know, they're, they're developing it into their own, into their own strategy. The seminars are getting bigger and bigger, aren't they? I mean, we've got, well, every time we have a seminar, it's bigger than the last one. We have to take bigger and bigger rooms. We obviously already are taking bigger and bigger yeah, rooms. Sure. So. No, it's great, it's great. Uh, so your tip number, tip number nine? Uh, notice the thing is failure. Uh, it, we're brainwashed to think failure is a bad thing, but actually it's a good thing. Because it means we're trying, we're pushing boundaries. Unless you push boundaries, you're never going to get anywhere. You're always going to be stuck in your little box. Um, and it's, it's getting out of the box, which is what we all want. We all want new experience, a new life, a better life. Uh, and to do that, you've got to get outside your box. But if you start pushing boundaries, then you're going to fail a lot of the time. And, and the whole learning process is a matter of failing and trying again, and failing and trying again. And I just find it bizarre, really, that we have this connotation of failure being a bad thing. Because it's, it's merely the sign that you actually are trying and doing stuff. Mm. So it's actually, it's, it's, it's a bloody good thing. <laughs> In fact, I think uh, you know, the people who go places fail far more than people who don't go places. So I mean, that alone says it all, I think. Um, I thought I should mention a few things about the, the video course. Um, I, I, I released this a few months ago. Uh, we're still in the testing phase, so people can join now, take the course, um, they get the, a free seminar, which is on the 14th of, no, on the 12th of April, 12th, yeah, yeah um, in Dorking. Uh, they get in at a, at a huge discount uh, uh, over the full price. And I can do it with a few more people because I've got enough people to fill the seminar, but they're not all going to come to the seminar. So I can do a few more, and you can do a few more beta testers just to get a, a critical, what's the, um, a new, what's the word I'm looking for? A nuclear, not nuclear mass, a critical, <laughs> mass, critical mass. Critical mass. Um, yeah, because you need a number of people just to get the buzz going at a seminar. Um, so if anybody listening to this would like more details of the video course, then, then please let me know. But it, it's more than just the systems. You, you get all the systems as part of the course. Yeah. It's also help with the psychology, which is what's so important. I mean, the thing about failure, for example, um, is something that people, I mean, we have been brainwashed in our education system and think failure is a bad thing. Yeah. And I, I have trouble thinking that people actually think that way. I don't know, I, I guess the people who run the education system have jobs and they don't push very much, maybe. Um, I, I don't know, it just seems bizarre to me that the, the one thing that, that, that pushes us forwards um, is treated as a bad thing. I mean, you know, going back to our, our primary, our prehistoric ancestor down in the ooze, I mean, how many times did, did that fish-like thing well, fail? So you, you've, got to, you've got to persevere these things. I mean, in my early trading days, I blew up at least three trading accounts. Um, but the way, I, the way I looked at it, that, that was my cost of learning. Um, just like if you, if, you, if you train to become a doctor, you go to university, you, you do all your training, it costs what, 20, 20,000 yeah. pounds. Um, and for me, uh, when, I did, when I blew up my trading accounts in the early days when I was learning, that's how I sort of focused on it. It was my cost of learning. Um, you know, I've more than recovered that over the years. Um, so it's, it's not really too much of an issue. That's, that's the best way of really focusing on it. It's your cost. It's the cost of learning and educating yourself um, in trading. I don't know any professional traders or all the, any of the traders that I, I, that I speak to regularly that haven't blown up a, a couple of accounts. No, true. I, I don't either. I don't. It's very, very rare to meet a, a trader who's who's made it and um, you know hasn't lost or failed at some point in time. Well, it's true in every walk of life. All the people who are, are at the top of their game have mm. all been through this, um, and you just don't get there without pushing it and, and without failing. That's, yeah, I mean, as it's called. In my early days, there were certainly times when I, you know, trading was very. It was getting to me, and um, I was finding I was finding it a struggle, and uh, I just took some time off, but. In, personally, I, I'm quite a stubborn guy. I don't, I don't give up. 
I know, so I know I'll Mark, just, I know. <laughs> I'll just keep going and going and going, uh, which is probably why I got through the other end. But um, I might well have, I did actually feel, feel like giving up some type stages, but I just kept going and going. And the rewards, the rewards are there at the end if you, um, if you persevere. Always, yeah, always. There's hard work, there's hard work in any profession you do. Um, but in trading, you know, once, once, you, once you have gone through, you know, through the tunnel and you're into the light, um, the rewards are fantastic. I mean, we're in some movies today. As long as you persevere, the, the rewards will always be there because you're always learning. I mean, the, the key thing is, is keep learning to build the experience and then things come right. And it's, uh, I, I know, it, it's, it's a tragedy really that the, the, the education system is geared up the way it is to discourage this sort of thing really. I suppose everybody can't do it. I mean, somebody's got to have jobs and do stuff and, and not everybody can, can be doing, persevering and, and doing these other things. But. But it's, um, I think the tragedy is when people actually want to do it, but don't for some reason. Mm. I mean, people who actually never really have that motivation. And you know, a lot of people are very happy, very content who they are, you know, doing what they do. And they don't, they don't want to do all this stuff. But, but the people who do want to, the tragedy is that if, if they don't for some reason, uh, then th that, that's where it's a great shame, I think. Okay, tip number, tip number nine for me was, is, is, is the news. Um, and really, it's very, very difficult to gain an edge on the news when you're trading. Uh, markets are driven by sentiment, so you might get a positive piece of news, but it might be taken uh, negatively, negatively by one person and, and positively by the other. So for that reason, it's, it's very, nearly impossible to predict how the market is going to uh, react to a piece of news. So what I do is I, I stand aside before um, before the news comes out and then I'll assess my positions afterwards and uh, if I'm in a position already then I'll leave a lock in some profit or put a guaranteed stop. We had non-farm payrolls uh, on Friday, Friday last and um, you know, the market was all geared to go down and I know a lot of people were short but um, you know the market it, it, it just it just but it rose, <laughs> it? Up, yes, massive yes. rally. Um, so that's you know a real good, clear example on uh, why it's so important to avoid avoid the news. Okay, so I go to my tip ten. Tip ten, ten tip, yeah. Uh, tip ten actually is a sort of summary of everything else. The, the three essentials to success is first putting in the work and doing the research, which we've discussed. Perseverance which is one of Mark's tips in any case. I mean, we both agree on that. I think there's no doubt about that. That, 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 thing, that is the secret of success. And of course, these 10 tips. You know, I'll, I'll, give, well, I'll give you my 10 tips, which are designed as part of this video course as, as a process to go through to get to success. Um, and I'd, you know, I'd be delighted if you'd, if you'd care to join me on this course. I say it's very limited numbers at this point in time. Discount, full day seminar. Uh, and, and also, we, I mean, we're both very happy if you had any questions uh, to ask. If you'd like us to discuss something on, on these, while we're, we're spending this time together in, in Thailand, um, if there's anything you'd like to, to know about, then drop us an email and we'll happily discuss it in, in, uh, in this format, which we both quite enjoy. Definitely, yeah, definitely. The, the, the doors are always open. I get a lot of emails saying, Mark, you know, I understand that you're, you're too busy to answer questions, and that, 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 that really is not the case. I'm, I'm always happy to, if, if, someone is, if someone is willing to learn, I'm always happy to help them along the way. Um, so my, my last tip is uh, large egos have no place in the, in the trading arena. And really that's just, I touched, we, we were discussing this earlier on in the week actually, we've just started um, a, a, trading, a trading corner. And it was really just touching on that too many people obsessed with trying to catch these, these big moves in the market, when really there are many, many uh, repetitive small moves which you can um, lock into each and every day uh, within the markets. And, and the profits really do stack up. And, and it's pers risk too, in fact, isn't it? Yeah, personally, I find that if, if you're focusing too much on positioning for a large move, it can sometimes result in the largest losses as well. Um, if the it can be, yes. Yeah, so that's why, why I've switched to the ETFs, really, for, for my yeah. small trading. Because, you, because so. you, get so, you, you get so attached to a view that the market has to do something, which, you know, that's the, that's the wrong thing to do. The markets can do anything. Um, so really just to sort of focus on that, 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 that there are opportunities every day in the market and um, you know the big moves only ha happen 20% of the time anyway, 80% of the time uh, the market's either consolidating or, or sideways or, or, or trading in a sideways move. So you know, uh, lock into those uh, low risk um, trade opportunities. 
if I think about this, I mean, the, the, I've, said, I've said before that the, the, this training course, um, the video course, is, is my life's work. I think, I'm thinking of it as my sort of the culmination of everything I've done in the marketplace. And it's, it's intended to cover everything that I think is valuable. So there will be, I've just occurred to me, there should be a module on, on ETFs because ETFs are a very useful format uh, for trading in. So that's a, that'll be a module I'll be, I'll be adding. In fact, I'll add anything that anybody thinks is useful within reason, obviously. Can we? Otherwise, one can get to some quite bizarre ideas. But um, I think have we got okay. the, the end of the sequence? I think we have. That's, uh, that's my top 10 tips and John's top 10 tips. And... Um, Thank you for listening. Yes, bye for now. Thank you.